Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. Welcome back yet again, everybody. We've got another video today. It's another day off. Matter of fact, this is my final day off before I head into some serious business this week. It's gonna get crazy with my new orientation at my new job. So before I continue to that, let's do another no hype review right here. And let's talk about a fragrance that was recently hyped even though it's actually an older fragrance. It was released like a few years ago. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Yet again, guys, your likes, your subscription is a huge help to this channel. We are growing, guys, and we are headed towards 12,000 subscribers. So if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. Watch the ads. It really does help me procure all these samples for me to try and have you guys know about these fragrances before you spend your hard-earned money on it. Now the fragrance we are going to talk about today is none other than Zoologist Nightingale, guys. Zoologist Nightingale. Look at that Nightingale, that beautiful kimono right there. Now Nightingale here is one of the hallmark. A lot of people are saying it's like one of the best Zoologist releases ever, guys, okay? And speaking of best Zoologist, I mean, if you guys are gonna ask me what are my favorite Zoologist fragrances, I've reviewed them all, at least top three, for me, it would be squid, camel, and bee, okay? Squid number one, maybe bee number two, and camel number three, if you're gonna ask me, out of the entire zoo. And we have videos of those three in the channel. I'll link them in the end. Now, Zoologist is well known for being different, okay? Definitely being different than your standard perfumes that are just pulling compliments, very simple, very clear. A lot of these fragrances are based on a theme or an animal such as Nightingale right here. And to me, that is a challenge. That is tough. I mean, you got to have a pretty damn good creative director like Victor, as well as perfumers that can actually translate the theme into the fragrance. Nightingale, the reason why I got prompted to review this thing was because three days ago, Victor posted this photo of this massive order of Nightingale and he said that a singular review made that happen. Wow. So it was like, I was just like, wow. You know, I really thought about how big, you know, the role is of perfume reviewers uh, when it comes to the community itself, how big it is, how one review can actually, you know, change the fortunes of uh, some of these perfumers or these perfume companies because a massive order could come right after like a huge nod. That is hype right there. That's underground hype, but that's still hype. And so I really wanted to revisit it. So I really did pull out Nightingale like three, four days ago and I started spraying away to give you guys a full breakdown of this fragrance. And another thing that I noticed when it came to Nightingale was that the reviews that I've seen on YouTube are either incomplete or downright cringy, <laughs> okay? And I've never said this about anybody, but really, if you wanna see some cringy review videos from years ago, definitely check out the Nightingale videos on YouTube. Some of them are very informative, but some of them are pretty cringy, no doubt. Here's the full breakdown. Hope you guys appreciate it. But before I continue, let's go spray this thing right now. Mm. Okay, so let's look into this Zoologist Nightingale. First thing that I'm going to say is that this fragrance has three distinct parts to it, okay? And I really can say that you can enjoy each part equally uh, rather than saying only one part of it is pretty good. The opening does start with a bed of saffron, guys. It's a bed of saffron, sweet saffron that is accompanied by lemon and bergamot, okay? So that is to me, a pretty unique uh, opening right there that does set up the future notes, the mid notes actually. But let's stop right here and let's just appreciate this for what it is. First and foremost, I love saffron in perfumes, especially in the opening. But right here, guys, the interesting thing is that the lemon is not going to be like your photorealistic lemon. Matter of fact, to me, it smells like Hall's honey lemon or that honey lemon menthol candy. That is what comes out here in the beginning of Nightingale. So again, you're going to get the sweet spice of saffron. If you're a big fan of saffron, you're gonna like it. But then there is a honey-like note 
that comes with the lemon. It's not just lemon alone. And maybe that is the fusion of saffron and lemon, but definitely there's a honey lemon smell here that is so distinct, that is so unique, that I think you're gonna like it. So the thing about Nightingale from start to finish is that in the beginning when you try it, you're gonna get these knee-jerk reactions, okay? So think about this. If you've smelled fragrances like Serge of Kobe for the past few days or something more mainstream, when you smell Nightingale and you do smell that honey lemon with that saffron, you might get like a knee-jerk reaction from it. But as you spray it even more, trust me, you are gonna appreciate this stage. It is pretty nice and sweet honey lemon with saffron. Now this stage lasts for 15 minutes tops guys and then in comes a dark rose petal note. And I believe this is rose oil, but it does smell like a dark rose petal. It smells like a straight up dark rose petal that you took right here and you smelled it right here, which is again different from some fragrances where rose is mixed with another note this one right here, full bloom, dark rose, you are going to smell it. And then you will have violet, which is a powdery violet, accompany this dark rose to give it a vintage feel right there. So rose and violet, this is the combo, the floral combo that will give you a vintage feel or it will start off that vintage feel of this fragrance right here. Now talking about that knee jerk reaction, a lot of y'all, I'm pretty sure once you smell the rose and the violet, will think grandma perfume, 100%. And that's the same reaction people get with fragrances like Chanel Number no. 5. It's something that's pretty complex, but knee jerk reaction, you are gonna think that it's a grandma perfume. There's some poopery smell here. It smells like poopery, I would say, right here in the mid, but it is a little bit airier than that. So it's like poopery, but like a very airy version of poopery. And there is a third note that they included right here that in my opinion balances it out to not make it too grandma-ish or not to make it too poopery. And that is none other than your Japanese plum blossom. Now right here, this Japanese plum blossom, I've never smelled this on its own. However, I will say this, that it does smell like a fruity note. It's a fruity nuance, kind of like a pink fruity uh, nuance right here that balances this out, turns the vintage dark rose violet combination, poopery combination into something part fruity so that when you smell it, it's not, you know, fully grandma-ish. You're gonna get a balanced, floral mid right here that is like i said pretty airy it's like an aura type scent and i think that it is a likable scent if you like florals now this floral airy mid part of nightingale does give me traditional japanese vibes guys okay and i guess that's why the nightingale right here is wearing a kimono or what is it a silk kimono type outfit right here it definitely takes me to Japan. I'm talking about the outdoor botanical gardens, cherry blossoms, traditional wooden temples, and forests. It gives me that springtime in Japan feel that, again, this is that poopery mixed with that plum blossom. The total effect is that, boom, it really does feel like a Japanese floral garden. With the total composition of this fragrance from the saffron intro with the lemon to this floral mid and then eventually a shipra dry down, actually I would say that this fragrance is a type of fragrance that brings the springtime with you rather than a fragrance that you will wear out into the springtime. There are fragrances that when you wear it you want to go out and it's sort of congruent with your experience outdoors. But in this case, guys, because the floral airy mid is squashed between two different dimensions that are actually more worn indoors, in my opinion, I believe that this fragrance will make you take the springtime with you. So if you are that type of person that you're gonna walk into the office or you're gonna walk into a social engagement, bringing in the botanical garden, the smell of a Japanese traditional botanical garden with you, and that's your aim. This is it right here, because that's what it does. It creates a scent trail of florals that will bring it to you rather than you going out there and basically having a congruent experience. Now this floral stage lasts around five hours significant scent. It is the longest part of this fragrance in my opinion, guys, and it does 
give you that vintage vibe almost immediately signaling that dry down guys and the bridge note that really heads to the dry down i would say is the oud okay and the oud right here is not your animalic middle eastern type oud it's basically a dark oud wood that comes in and bridges from the rose into the dry down guys and eventually that oud turns into labdanum and sandalwood but in my opinion the oud wood is going to be your bridge note right here. Now this fragrance ends with a Chypre Accord, a classic Chypre Accord that will remind you of Chanel number no. 5, Mitsuko, a lot of these uh, classic uh, fragrances, the Chypre fragrances that really caused such a wave uh, back in the old days, guys. And you are going to get that right here. But before that, I'm gonna say this, that what I like about this fragrance, and I'm just appreciating the notes and the breakdown of this, is the continuity. From the violet rose combination, in comes incense and olibanum, okay? So you're gonna get incense and olibanum pretty much continuing uh, the poopery smell, and it goes right into incense. So that's what I like about it. It actually feels like a prolonged smell from poopery to incense, but it's actually a transition. And I really like how it is airy rather than thick. It's not heavy. You are going to get light nuances of that incense, of that olibanum, just as how you will get the light poopery smell from the mid. There are also other light notes from this dry down that keep it light. And that's going to be your sandalwood and white musk. To me, those two notes, again, contribute to the airiness of this perfume, guys. It's not thick. It's not an in-your-face type of perfume. And then basically the rest is your Chypre Accord. As you guys know, Chypre, you've got Labdanum, which gives like a leathery amber vibe. And then you've got Oak Moss. Those are the two like chief parts of a Chypre Accord. But of course, there are going to be your Chypre modifiers such as ambergris, such as your patchouli, and of course sandalwood and white musk are also parts of this classic Chypre Accord. Now once the dry down settles in, again set up by that violet, that powdery violet in the mid, I think that a lot of women will really get that Mitsuko vibe. I think that a lot of women will really equate this to complexity, the complex dimensions of a woman. Maybe will equate this to success and power, prestige, Something that, you know, Mitsuko has done, something that Chanel number no. 5 has done to many moms, I mean, what? to many women uh, in the past. Uh, I think that you will get the same uh, type of feels right here. It's very complex. Again, this is something that I feel is more worn indoors, okay? Again, you are bringing the springtime with you indoors but then you're also projecting that prestige that power that complexity i think that this is a fragrance that a woman who regularly shops at beverly hills at rodeo drive would wear at fifth avenue or a woman that could be a ceo or upper management or somebody that has power somebody that wields power and is assertive i think that this is for that type of woman somebody that is a trendsetter rather than somebody that is following trends. This is not for those with knee-jerk reactions to perfumes. Those that initially, like when they smell something, they won't give it a chance and they'll just scrub it off and they'll say, nah, this will grow on you. I suggest you try it if you're a woman, like I said, and if you're into those old school vintage perfumes, I think that this is a plus. Now, performance wise, this really surprised me. This surprised me because this was like a light, airy aura scent. This is what really surprised me because I thought that because of those heavy floral elements, or at least that's what I thought it was gonna be a heavy floral element, that it was gonna be a punch in the face. Matter of fact, when I was testing this fragrance, I was outside the house. I wasn't indoors because I didn't want to spray this and suddenly my entire room is going to smell like a vintage woman's perfume. So I walked out and that's where I tested it outside. And actually I was really surprised at how light it was, that it wasn't as much of a strong punch in the face. This can be smelled by people maybe three feet away from you, but past that, maybe not. When I was testing this, you know, I would say people that are like maybe five feet away, uh, they cannot smell it, okay? But people that are kind of near me, they can smell it, which is great because it does show some restraint on this fragrance. Maybe if you're a woman that 
uh, shows class and complexity and you want to show that you have restraint finesse then of course you can't have a beast you can only have like an aura scent and that's precisely what this does right here a longevity wise this fragrance lasts six to seven hours significant scent some people say it's weak but I think it's okay guys okay and to be honest I think this is another case of the Louis Vuitton effect where I am spraying from a little itty bitty vial right here but then the actual bottle will spray a lot more juice so it it may be longer than that but for me just upon testing of this and it's more than three sprays like six seven sprays this one lasted me seven hours significant scent right here and again it is an aura scent it is a sillage that will not go past uh, maybe three feet away from you now another thing that I would say is a plus with this fragrance is the pricing guys so Nightingale 60 ml bottle full bottle is hundred sixty five dollars and you know, when I think about Nightingale, I think about Roja actually, especially that last part with your classic sheep record. I think about Roja's sheep combinations, the amazing sheep fragrances done by Roja. And those fragrances did give me some old man, rich man, super uber rich man vibes. And you know, this one gives me mature woman, rich woman vibes as well. It's like a rich woman, complex woman, kind of mature upper management. Uh, type of vibe right there, but guess what the difference is this one right here 165 bucks Compared to the thousand dollar Roja Sheepers right here. So that's really what I like about this fragrance This fragrance is deep complex unique. It does bring the air of success But then it is not that expensive. It's hundred sixty five dollars for 60 ml as opposed to the over thousand dollar Roja Sheepers, okay, so you can enjoy a traditional Sheepers with a mix of Japanese botanical gardens right here in this fragrance, Zoologist Nightingale. So I can see now where the hype comes from, but definitely I would say you would have to get over your knee-jerk reactions as a perfume tester. You have to try it over and over. You have to spray it more than once. You have to try it several times before you can truly, truly appreciate it for what it is, guys, okay? The knee-jerk reactions will not apply because First spray, you're gonna be like, oh God, poopery, old woman vibes, but no. Actually, there are a lot of interesting, beautiful stages in this perfume that is worth checking out over time. Okay, so that is it. That is my full breakdown review of Zoologist Nightingale. I know that a lot of you were saying, why that? I mean, you could have done any other perfumes that are hyped right now. But like I said, I mean, I go with what my emotions tell me. If my gut and my emotions tell me, I'm gonna review this, that's what I'm gonna review. Because these reviews do take energy, guys, and passion. And so, I mean, that's where my passion took me, guys, okay? So we, we're gonna detour a bit from the usual with this fragrance right here but then again guys a lot of you I know are into zoologists so if you would like me to review the new ones scarlet scarab cow snowy owl please let me know in the comments below and I will definitely you know purchase a sample from Victor Victor good job on this one okay good job on this one this might not be the fragrance that's for everyone but I will say that if it hits the right target the right woman would actually wear this I think that it's a win. So hopefully that helped you guys. If you have any comments and opinions about this fragrance, let me know on the comments below. Let me know what your opinion is. It doesn't matter, good or bad, whatever. Comment below, let me know what you guys think, okay? And until then, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Again, we're headed to 12,000. I hope we hit it within the next month. Please continue to support the channel. And until then, this is Troy D. I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Peace.